What's up guys, welcome to Diving Garage. It's a new year, so it's time for a new engine build. We're gonna be doing this little guy right here. It's a pretty sweet little combo. 283 on the bottom, 305 high output on the top. Now before you get started doing anything else on your build, the first thing you need to do is figure out your clearances. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to measure your crankshaft to make sure it's ready for all that power you're about to put down. Let's dive in. Now I tore this guy apart in August of 2023, and it's just been sitting on my engine stand waiting to get rebuilt and now is finally the time. When I took this apart, it went pretty smooth, but the thing that uh, sort of surprised me was that when I took the pistons out, every single piston ring exploded on the way out. Now, a lot of people said that's because of the, uh, there was a groove at the top of the cylinder. Uh, I mean, I didn't really see that, but I don't know, maybe it was from age, maybe there's a groove, not important. Um, but I tore down a different engine and I got these 305 high output heads. And this actually is a known Pretty good, pretty ripping combo. Now the plan for this is to make it a vintage bracket racing engine. So we're gonna be doing a couple trick things to help it survive all that race abuse it's gonna see. Um, but these things when built right are like tanks because it only has a three inch stroke. Uh, you can really, really rev these things, but you gotta make sure to do some uh, extra work up top to accommodate all that. Now in this engine build series, I'm gonna do things a little bit differently. Um, in the past, I had done one video and covered a bunch of different topics. Uh, this go around, I'm going to cover one topic per video. So uh, the videos might be a little bit shorter, but they'll be a little more focused. So if you're just looking for one thing particularly, you'll be able to find it a little bit easier. So that's enough of that. Let's go get to that crankshaft. So as you're looking this thing over, the thing you want to check for is cracks and any sort of heat stress. So if we look at this crank, we see no heat discoloration. And I'll, I'll show you the whole thing. I've already looked at it, but I'll show you the whole thing all the way around. Uh, this is oiling discoloration. This is totally fine. Nothing wrong there. Uh, with the heat, you're looking for like a black or maybe a purple, some sort of dark, dark brown. I don't see any of that here. Everything looks really good. Uh, and this section is extra dirty because this is where the rear main seal is. So that's totally fine that there's uh, maybe a little bit on this side. That just means the seal was failing, but that's okay. We're going to fix that. Uh, otherwise, everything looks really good. And uh, one common thing people like to do when they see something that they're concerned about, like that little guy right there. Let me see if I can get you focused in on that. Let's see. There you go. See that little thing right there? Focus, focus. So that really is not a problem. And then what I was trying to say is that they always do the fingernail test, right? Uh, but people act like one tiny little ding is gonna ruin the whole build. It's not, guys. It's really not. Um, Yes, you don't want any cracks or any major dings in, in here like that, but that little guy ain't doing nothing. So check out the other side. All right, same deal over here. All the mains look solid. No cracks or anything like that. Looking good. Again, you can do the fingernail test if you want. I got a little bit of a hang up right here, but I think that'll polish right out. And nothing there. This looks good. Again, a little bit of discoloration from the oil seal leaking. No big deal. So... So far, we only have, what, one, I think it was this one. So two areas of any sort of concern. Everything else looks pretty solid. Another thing you want to check is your um, snout here where your uh, harmonic dampener will mount. And just make sure that's not all galled up. Make sure it looks nice and round. I left the gear on there because I'm going to be using that again. Uh, it was totally fine. Um, but otherwise, everything looks really good. And before we go getting this real deep cleaned, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing some measuring. So the tool we'll need is really just one, and it's pretty simple. Uh, this is a micrometer. I'm going to show you how to read this in just a second here, but this is all you need. And if you're doing any sort of engine building for your first time, I highly recommend getting one of these little sets. They're really not too expensive. I got this one on Amazon. If I can find it, I'll put the link in the description below. Otherwise, the only other one you need is a bigger micrometer like this guy right here. This is a four to five inch mic. Uh, we're not gonna need that for this engine, but if you're doing like a 350, then you will. All right, so let's get to it. All right, so we need to know what we're measuring and what reference we actually have. So um, what I want you to do is go on to the MoTeC website. Uh, if you're building a small block, all the information is there for Chevys and Fords. I think even Mopar stuff. Um, but what we're looking at today is we need our mains to be 2.300 and our rods to be just two inches flat. That's what we're looking for. Those are the values that we're hoping we find. I think we will. I think it's. I think it'll be just fine. Um, but let's get to it. So, all 
All right, so to get started here, we got our two to three inch mic out because we, again, we're expecting the mains to be 2.300. And so I'm gonna put a picture of this up on the screen here, um, but setting this up is really easy. So we know when we're starting it's two inches. And every time we come out, that's another 10th. So we have 2.1. We have 2.2, come out one more. 2.3 and if you can see these little hash marks the little quarter lines those are uh, 0 0.025 of a tenth so 25 thousandths that's pretty set up we got 2.3 we'll kind of float it there at zero and what i'm going to do is come a little bit bigger loosen it up and we're going to fit it over our main journal and what you want to do is grab this little little um, thimble on the top and just turn it slightly until it's centered and then just um, until it starts clicking. Here we go. Here we go. And then kind of give it a wiggle. Make sure it's sitting flat on the widest parts of the journal there. You got to, if you have to, come back off, get back on. It's no problem. We're measuring, we're, we're going to be taking a lot of time, so go ahead and go slow. All right, so that right there seems like a good spot. Let's go ahead and lock it down, bring it out. All right, so. We said that we have, um, we're supposed to be at 2.3, right? So we haven't quite got the zero mark all the way to where the three is. So that means we have 2.275, and then we have 20, one, two, three. So we're just too shy of that um, 2.3 uh, measurement. Anyway, so that's kind of a lot, but this is the way I would recommend doing it. I would recommend just take it slow. So we know that we had a value of two inches. We started off at that, and then we had 0.200, and then we had 0 0.75, and then we had 0 0.23, and then just add them up. So we got 2.298. So that's only two thousands off. Can you see that? There we go, 2.298. So that's only two thousandths off spec. And you know, that's really good. Uh, only being two thousandths off while measuring one of our mains, that's that I'm willing to bet the rest of these will measure out just fine. And that was the number one, two, that was the number three main. I did that one because the lighting is a little easier there. But let's do another one just to double check. Now let's try the, um, oh, let's do the number four main. The nice lighting over there. Same deal. We're gonna unlock this, open it up a little bit past uh, 2.3. I'm going to kind of float it on there. Let's go there, lock her down. All right, so I'm looking at this. Again, we have two inches, and it looks like we have 2.275 again, and we got 20, 1, 2, oops, excuse me, 20, 1, 2, 3, almost 4. So, I mean, just knowing our values, we're only 1,000 shy. Uh, and then that's pretty easy. So then all you gotta do is just repeat that for all the main journals. Okay, so I got that done for all the mains. Uh, a little bit out of order here, but number one was 2.299, and then number two was basically 2.298. Same number three, and number four was 2.299, number five was 2.298. So otherwise, this is a very, the mains on this crank are very healthy. They're only one to two thou off spec. That's really good. Now let's check the um, rod journals. Okay, so we're doing our rod journals. Again, this is a two to three inch mic. So I got this twisted all the way down to zero and zero. And I'm just gonna open up just a little bit so we can make sure we can close down on it. So same deal, all you do is come around the journal, open it up and then slowly squeeze down on it. Lock it down, come check it out. So this one is actually really easy to do because if we're at two inches and the zero mark is right here, there's almost no thinking that has to happen. And right here we can see we're just one thou short. So that means that this is 1.999. And that's pretty, that's pretty easy there. Uh, we can do another one right over here. Check it out. Again, just about one thou short. So again, 1.999. Um, that this 
of doing this one, it really doesn't get any easier than that. So you don't have to worry about the thousands. You don't have to worry about the veneer up top. So I'm not going to get into it. Um, all you got to do is just see how many thou you're short. Very easy. All right, this is a little crazy because I was trying to show you and do it at the same time. Uh, but make sure you keep these notes so that way you know what sort of bearings to order. So all the rods are a 1.999, perfect. I would say that's even with spec of our micrometer that we're using, so it might even be two on the money. And all the mains were really healthy, no issues there as far as measurements go. And that's really it. Uh, you only need one tool to do this. And if you're working on a different size engine, maybe you got a small block, a 350 small block Chevy or even a big block, um, just make sure you use the size micrometer to where your measurement falls inside of that range. You don't want to measure like three and I don't know, 20 thou, because that's not what this is for. You need to get a three to four uh, micrometer. All right, guys, and that's pretty much it. Pretty easy, wasn't it? Well, the point of this whole build, really the point of my whole channel, is to show you that you can build your own engine, skip the machine shop, and save some money. Uh, the goal for this engine, <laughs> I'm gonna say it now, the goal for this engine is to keep it under $500. Now, I don't know if we're gonna be able to do that, but that's what I'm gonna try to do. We'll see what happens. If this is your first time building an engine, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. I have a ton of other content on how to build engines, um, but these, like I said, these videos will be a little more focused and she'll be a little easier to find. And just if, if it helps you out at all, if I can build this 700 horsepower blower motor with minimal experience, you can do it too. So if you liked the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and get out there and dive your next project. Catch you next time.